So from the very beginning, the goal with Repitch has always been simple. Offer a comprehensive set of tools that will allow a user to arrive at a polished and refined end product with the most transparent results in the quickest amount of time possible. So regardless of whether you want to work with presets that will allow you to detect a measured scale and then snap all notes of the sung performance to the nearest pitch based on that scale, or if you'd like to work 100% manually, we've got a really great set of tools that allow us to arrive at a really polished end result quickly. Let's have a quick listen to this phrase over here. Quiero, te quiero, te quiero. So I'm happy with everything at the beginning, but let's take a look at this end section. We can see from the pitch trace that there's a couple issues, but in general, I really like the character. And based on the type of vibe that this song is, we need to maintain this character as much as possible. So my conventional editing techniques that I would probably use for this would be quite simply to put a slice here, and then I would take a look at evening out the tilt or drift of this pitch trace, maybe redrawing some sections until I get it to sound as natural as possible while still maintaining all the original character. But wouldn't it be amazing if we had a way to manipulate this pitch trace in a completely non-destructive way without having to make any cuts or without having to even redraw anything? Enter the Shaper tool. So as you can see in the GUI here, we have a new icon. We have a shortcut of V that will allow us to move to that quickly. And as you might expect, each one of these shape points that we've added now allows us to move the pitch trace. This is great for fixing things where maybe an artist veered off a little bit with the vibrato, or maybe you need to move these shape points all together while maintaining the natural balance of the performance. Regardless of what you need to do, we think that the Shaper tool is really going to revolutionize the way that you work. Quiero, te quiero, te quiero. Versus. Quiero, te quiero, te quiero. Let's take a look at a few more examples. Also worth noting that I'm able to bypass repitch by using the B key shortcut, which has been added in version 1.3. So let's move to the very beginning of the song and let's go through a couple different examples. No, no me okay, right here is a really great case for the shaper tool. Let's take a look at this vibrato. So overall, what I'd like to do is just even this out a bit. Now, I don't necessarily want to just flatten out the modulation of this pitch curve because that wouldn't give me what I'm looking for. Also worth noting that in Repitch version 1.3, we have these new control points, which give us access to some commonly used features when we're using the main selector tool. So we can click, hold, and drag to flatten out the modulation. In addition to that, we also have one for drift. So I can change the drift of this overall performance. We have another one for a level change. If I wanted to increase this or decrease this, this is something that we can do easily from the main display here. And then last but not least, we have another one for correction. So based on the average of this pitch block, I can now move the correction up all within the main selector tool. But let's reset this right now. We will go reset selected notes to all changes. And let's take a look at how I could use the shaper tool to even this out. So again, I'm going to give us a little bit of context. We'll play from here. No, no it's good, but I definitely want to just tame this a little bit. Now, in context of the track, let's have a quick listen to how this sounds. No, no me a tener. So we need to make sure that we maintain all the natural character, but I don't want to have to be cutting this up or redrawing all these pitch traces manually. I'm going to move over to the Shaper tool. As you can see, I've already added some nodes here. And in this case, it's really just a simple case of adjusting these shape points and to just tame this in a way that basically levels this off. Now, the great thing about this is we have so much control, and this is really great for if you have a certain area that has just kind of like wavered down a little bit. And let's have a listen now. Before. No, no me and after. No, no me so we've maintained the natural character, but we've just kind of smoothed things out a little bit. Now, in terms of adding shape points, it's very easy. You can add as many or as little as you want. So for example, I could add one here, add one here, add another one here. And then now we have a couple different behaviors in terms of how the shape points work for the shaper tool. So if you select one or more, if you have two points that are locked down on either side, then you'll notice that it's moving relative to each other. And also you might see a change in terms of the modulation of the pitch trace. But we can also add multiple points and we can click, hold and drag, use our mouse and drag left or right to reposition these points as needed. So for example, this one over here, maybe I want to move this all the way to here. 
and this one here, I'll just move it over here. And now I have the ability to swipe across and I can highlight multiple shape points. And we have two different behaviors that could occur. So for example, we have that behavior where we're flattening out or increasing modulation curves. But in addition to that, if I hold down the alter option modifier, then we're just basically moving these relative to each other and we're anchoring down according to the before and after points. Now, double clicking any shape point that we've added with the shaper tool, we'll quite simply remove it. And as you can see that this is now spreading across these two words over here, I could, for example, grab this shape point and I could move this and it's moving the whole entire phrase. So this gives you a completely different way to tackle the tuning. Now, also worth mentioning that even if I'm using the Shaper tool, as I am over here, that I can still use all the tools that I'm used to. So for example, I've made some changes using the Shaper tool because we've added these nodes over here and I could refine this to my heart's content. But let's say now I just wanted to do a really quick double click to bring this to 100%. Let's see how this sounds now. Before. So we're taking out that fluctuation of the pitch. And last but not least, let's hear it in context with the track. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Let's move on to one more example. Okay, so here's another example where I might want to tame this vibrato a bit. Again, we hit the shaper tool. These shape points can be added just by single clicking, and then we can do exactly what we need to do. Maybe I just want to straighten this out and level this out a little bit. Maybe I want to pull this one down. I'm essentially just adjusting exactly how I want this to function, and then I can highlight across and I can move all of these together until I'm happy with the performance. So before, Vida. versus, Vida. So we're just kind of massaging our pitch trace into exactly what's needed for the track. Now also, with respect to the Shaper tool, we are currently taking a look at using it with the pitch trace, but this is something that can also be applied when we are talking about levels as well. So let's say that we wanted to make some adjustments to the level on this note over here. We could hop over to the Levels page, and then with the Shaper tool, we could simply add a couple nodes. Maybe we'll lock down this endpoint over here, and then we would have the ability to quite simply swipe across here, and I could increase these two points over here, and now we've just changed the level of this actual performance. So we'll undo that, take a look at this, and we will redo that. And of course, we can do a combination of the two, where we are creating some shape points to adjust the pitch trace, but we're also doing some level adjustments behind the scenes. And then as mentioned, we can do this in combination with the tools that we've been used to since Repitch first came out. Going back and forth until we are completely happy with our performance. And while on the topic of shape points, if at any given point in time I wanted to revert back to the original, it's just a matter of right clicking and then we can choose the option to delete the shaper tool group. And of course we can combine this with resetting all changes to bring us right back to where we started. Now another area where we see some massive improvements with Repitch version 1.3 is with respect to how we can edit and manipulate the timing of a performance. I'm going to temporarily hop over to the Warp Point tool and take a look at all these Warp Points which have been added. The minute that this vocal was ingested, Repitch has gone through and it has added Warp Points in very specific areas that will allow us to manipulate and adjust the timing of our performance, but we never have to leave the main selector tool. So let's zoom in a little bit on a very specific section. Let's play from here. Let's say that I wanted to make some adjustments to this timing. There's a couple things to make note of. So first and foremost, if you hover your cursor in the top 50% of a pitch block, let's just zoom in on this a little bit over here, you'll see that we have the traditional icon that we're used to. We can double click to snap this to zero, but as we go to the bottom, notice that we have something new over here. We can now adjust the timing. Take a look at what's happening downstream and upstream from this pitch block that I've just moved. Now, in addition to functioning on individual pitch blocks, we can obviously make a highlighted selection, and then we have an anchor point as we move our cursor to the left or right side, which will allow us to adjust the timing of this phrase, and it's maintaining all the relative timing either upstream or downstream. Or we could easily go the other way. I'm actually doing a lot of adjustments here 
And it's amazing that even though we're manipulating the timing quite a bit, the audio is not really falling apart and disintegrating. So this can be used for anything from subtle adjustments to completely repocketing a performance and adding swing to something that was sung straight or quite simply just massaging the pocket into place as you go. And like I said, we no longer have to worry about adding any of these warp points because it's all done from within the main selector tool and it works in a smart way. And last but not least, we now have the ability to adjust our shortcuts. And the way that we do this is by clicking the keyboard shortcuts option over here. The first thing that we need to do though, is we need to create a copy. So what we can do is we can quite simply copy the set. We can give it a name. In my case, I've already done this and I've chosen the repitch dash MH copy. And then we have the ability to add any key commands that we need. So for example, I could hold down any modifiers, add this, and now this will give me the ability to move something up by one cent manually. So now if we reactivate this and I choose this, now we're at one cent, two cents, three cents, and so on and so forth. For more information or to download your fully functioning demo of Repitch, head over to SynchroArts.com. Thanks for your time, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.